Hello, my name is Paul Boag and I work in user experience design and conversion rate optimization. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about AI and the impact that AI has had on my job because I am pleased to say it has made my job a lot easier. And if you ever find yourself doing any kind of user research, you really want to be making use of the amazing tools that are available to us now that just make things so much more straightforward than they used to be. Because in truth, user research can be difficult and time consuming and quite frustrating as an experience because it's challenging to understand and interpret what you're learning as a um, user researcher. And these challenges basically fall into three areas. First of all, there's understanding data. Whether it's Google Analytics, whether it's Hotjar, wherever you've got a large amount of data, working through and getting understandings and insights and observations from that data can be really difficult. But AI is an amazing tool that helps you do exactly that. But then there's surveys. If you ever run a survey and have an open-ended question and you're faced with hundreds if not thousands of answers to that open-ended question, that is intimidating. To work through that and identify common themes can be a massive undertaking. And if you ever do user interviews, you're then faced with transcripts of these conversations. And where did someone say that? And I'm sure I remember this, but I can't remember where or how to find it. All of those are areas that AI can help with. But in this particular video, I wanna focus on those second two. And that's because that is a real strength of AI to understand language and to enable you to um, search through that language, find common themes and that kind of stuff. Now, AI is brilliant with data as well, but that's a whole nother conversation that I don't wanna get into in this short video. So let's concentrate on those two for a second. Starting with open-ended questions. Now, the chances are, if you've run a survey at any time recently, you probably avoided having open-ended questions because they are such a pain in the ass to deal with, right? But multi-choice isn't really a lot better. In fact, in many ways, it's worse. We use multi-choice because it's easy to process the data, but it comes with downsides as well. For a start, by having a predefined set of answers, you're leading users, right? You're suggesting answers to them, and that makes the question and the answers associated with it very biased in the results. But also, it means you don't get those unexpected answers, right? The things that you hadn't anticipated beforehand. Maybe you don't know what answers to put in the multi-choice in the first place. So in a lot of ways, being able to ask open-ended questions is far superior, but we kind of avoided it because of the processing of all of that information afterwards. But with AI, we can now do that. Let me give you an example of what I mean. One of my favorite surveys to run is probably the simplest survey of all time. It has one question. And I do it as an exit intent survey that I place on any landing page that I ever produce, right? So as someone leaves that landing page, if they're going to leave it and they haven't acted, then I trigger this survey that asks one simple question. If you decided not to sign up today, it would be helpful to know why. Because if we've got the answers to that, then we can start doing objection handling and working out what those problems are and how to improve the landing page. So let's say you've run that survey. It's an open-ended um, uh, question. There might be hundreds, if not thousands of answers. So how do you deal with all of that using AI? Well, here's the way that I tend to deal with it, right? Let's create a new chat. And the first thing I do is I um, have my survey results downloaded as a you know, CSV file or something like this. So you can see how this is a really simple survey of just the one question with 222 answers in there about why people didn't act on that landing page. So once I've got my um, CSV file downloaded, the next step is to upload it to ChatGPT. And you literally just drag and drop it. Now you are going to need the pro account of ChatGPT, which I think is $10 a month or something like that. And you can have it for a month and then get rid of it if you're not doing surveys regularly. But for this one thing, you are going to need that pro account. So once you've uploaded it 
then it can do data analysis for you. Now, obviously, you can ask whatever you want to, um, but the most common question that I ask is this one. Let's pop it in. Um, and it's attached as a survey asking the question, if you decided not to sign up today, it would be useful to know why. Please, can you identify common themes? And this is what AI is really good at doing, looking through all that content and finding common themes for you. And then can you rank those themes based on the number of times people mention them? All right, so let's run this and see what happens. So it'll take a few minutes to look through all of those answers, a few minutes, few seconds, it doesn't take very long at all, but it looks through all of those answers. It goes through and identifies common themes and then it cycles back through the process to pull up the results for you. And once it's done that, it's gonna basically give us, as you can see, a prioritized set of themes based on how many times they're mentioned. So cost being too high is our number one reason for people not um, uh, signing up. And that's been mentioned 16 times. And then there's a related one, number two, which is they have to wait until they've got more budget available. So that's another price related one and so on and so on and so on, right? And you can ask them to add more or less. You can ask it to um, maybe tell, show you the answers that it's categorized in a particular way, whatever follow-up questions you want. But that is such a quick and easy way of getting really high quality, qualitative feedback from people. So there you go. Obviously, you can use the same technique with whatever surveys you want. But what about user interviews and those transcripts that are so time consuming to work through? Well, basically, if you've got any kind of um, ability to record those conversations, then you can get them transcribed with AI and AI can analyze those for you and pull out common themes. But I've come across a tool that is um, much more powerful either than that, and it's called Fathom. And Fathom, actually, I use it for every meeting I ever have. It's one of these note-taking, AI note-taking tools, but it is absolutely invaluable when I do a user interview. Let me show you what I mean, right? So here is a user interview that I, I ran relatively recently, and it's giving me all kinds of stuff. Now, obviously, I can watch the interview back and I can jump around wherever I want in the interview, um, as you would expect. But also, it's done a whole load of other things. It's created these meeting notes for me here, which, um, as you can see, cover all of the different areas of improvements or things that the user wants. And any of these I can click on and then jump through to that part of the, um, of the interview so that I can see those specific, you know, what is said in those specific circumstances. Also, here are all the questions that I asked as well, and I can jump through to any of these and see what response that I got to those questions. But it goes even further. I've also got the complete transcript here, and I can click, you know, I can search this transcript, and I can click on any particular part of the transcript, and it will jump to that point in the video. So it's incredibly powerful, but even more, I can also ask questions. So I can go in and let's uh, take a question that I, I created earlier. Um, I think I selected all of that when I just wanted this bit. And then let's paste that in. What were the main uh, pain points experienced by this user? That just happens to be an example. And it will now go through that transcript and it will find all of those pain points as you can see here, right? So the website's hard to use. Um, it's difficult to contact HR. The onboarding process is difficult. And so I've got all of those additional insights as well. So as you can see, AI is incredibly powerful at letting me look at information in ways that I've never been able to do before as a user researcher. So I'd really encourage you to give it a go. Go and try these tools because you'll find that you can do so much more user research than you've ever been done before because it's so much quicker and you'll get better results too.